Ashley Easter. And I'm Charlie Grantham, and you're listening to Serendipity, the podcast where we explore everyday magic all around us. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Serendipity. Today, we are doing a mini episode. Uh, If you listened to our podcast last week with Mindy Parker, she is back, and she's got a couple serendipitous stories to share. So, hey, Mindy. Hey, Charlie. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. How are y'all doing? Doing good. I'm so excited to tell this. (laughs) Yes. So the first, you have two serendipitous stories. The first one, we're going to kind of tell together because I feel like it's our serendipitous story, but the second one is yours that you can just tell. But why don't you kick off the first one? Okay, yes. So both of my serendipitous stories have to do with Taylor Swift. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, number one artist on Spotify wrapped every year. She's my favorite. And so you're on the right podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, big Taylor fan. And So I am actually graduating law school in May and a few friends and I for my grad trip are going to Iceland. And we also found out recently Taylor Swift announced that she's going on tour. And so immediately Charlie and I were both like, okay, we have to go. Like we don't know where yet because she hadn't even announced dates, but we just know we have to go see her somewhere. Well, I was going to say just as a background to this, we had kind of been thinking we, we probably want to see her in Boston. That's what we're thinking because yeah. it's, it's close to, to me. <laughs> That's really the reason <laughs> it's easier for Mindy to fly than me. Cause I have the three pets. And so Boston's like a short drive. So that was kind of like what we were thinking and hoping is like Boston will be the show that we go to. And for the Iceland thing, we bought our tickets for Iceland like two months ago, I think. Um, And so that was, those dates were like set in stone two months ago before her new album, um, Midnight's came out and way before she like announced a tour. So I just, those are like some key details. Yes. So I live in New Orleans and the Boston, we booked our flights to Iceland from Boston. So those dates were set. We were going to, I was going to fly to Boston and then go to Iceland from there. And so Taylor Swift announced her tour dates And she had a show that was two days before we left from Boston in Boston. And so we saw that and we're like, it can't get any more perfect than this. We can just go. I can fly to Boston like two days early. We'll go to the concert that night, just kind of spend the day doing whatever. And then we'll leave for ice on the next day. So we're just like, this is perfect. This is what we're going to do. Everything's great. Well, the demand for Taylor Swift tickets was insane so she actually ended up adding like 17 new tour dates I think or 12 new tour Mm -hmm. dates something like that and she added a date that was the night before we left Boston so she added one more date so like as if we fly to Boston I mean to Iceland let's say on a Monday the concert is a Sunday night now so it's like the absolute perfect date it could not get any more perfect than that. And we were just like, oh my gosh, like I was like, this is the Lord's graduation gift to me. Like there's no other explanation for it. This is his gift to me. And so it's like perfect because it's literally like we're kicking off the entire trip with this. And um, she has different people opening for her, right? Like, and we knew, and it, it varies by city. And so the Friday night um, and Saturday, it was like Phoebe Bridgers and I think Gail opening. And I really wanted to see Phoebe Bridgers, but Mindy preferred and this other person, Irina, or I say this other person, uh, another good, good friend, Irina, um, who's going to be coming with us. Um, she wanted to see both Mindy and her wanted to see Gracie Abrams more. And this third show she added has both Gracie Abrams and Phoebe Bridgers. So it's like we get to see everyone like everyone's happy. This is exactly but there's more to it. Yes. Then, so this was just like finding out where she was playing. Then we moved on to actually getting the tickets, which I don't know how much everyone listening knows about the Taylor Swift ticket fiasco, Mm -hmm. but there are now like statistics that say you have a better chance of getting into Harvard than getting Taylor Swift tickets. Like (laughs) like Harvard's acceptance rate is 5% and the percentage of people that got tickets were 2%. Like it was insane. 
And so we, Charlie, Irina, and I were on FaceTime. Like we were ready. We were in that waiting room waiting for tickets. Um, and compared to everyone else's experience, I would say we had a pretty like easy experience overall. Yeah. Because it was chill. Yeah, we like sat in the waiting room. We had that 2000 plus people in line and just kept like waiting and waiting. And finally, mine started to like dwindle down and we ended up getting the tickets pretty, pretty easily and pretty reasonably priced considering. Yes, we paid less, way less than what we thought we were going to pay. Mm -hmm. And we had like Mindy got in and we're just like, okay, like, and, and it's very calm. Like it was just like, Mindy's like, okay, where should we go? Do we want to go here? And we're like, oh, we'll see how much they are over there. Oh, how about over there? Should we do those three together or those six together? Like we were just really like taking, cause you have 10 minutes, but we were like really just taking the full 10 minutes. Like, and then Mindy got them and then she had to leave to go to class. So she left the FaceTime, but Irina and I stayed on FaceTime and in the waiting room because there was another person we we weren't sure if we were going to have to get tickets for someone else but uh-huh. we eventually got into the waiting room and not only there were barely any seats left the ones that were left they were like so much more expensive and they were like worse seats than ours but it was like there wasn't even enough time because they would disappear and that's kind of like what we were hearing is that people yeah. would get in and there would be seats and before they could even click to add to cart they would be gone and it's like we our experience was like oh let's just hang out let's use the full 10 minutes like are you sure like and it's like how how did this happen like it's so wow. when you think about the people i mean just i feel bad like on tiktok just scrolling and it's people crying and mm-hmm. snotting over and it's like it's like and i'm like i we did not have this experience at all like it was so different mm-hmm. um you know but I think Ticketmaster is like under investigation by the government now yeah. or something yeah. um, for that. Have so. y'all seen the John Oliver um, last week tonight um, episode about Ticketmaster? No. Okay. You all have to watch it. You know who, who John Oliver is last week? Yeah. Tonight? Okay. So he does like yeah. comedy uh, about like real events. So he talks about like serious stuff, but he makes jokes along the way. He He's done one on Ticketmaster, I think maybe last year, the beginning of this year. And yeah, they're, they're pretty shitty but yeah that is so amazing that you guys got it on those dates and it was like so chill to be able to get them and you got good pricing and oh they just lined up with dates that you already had for like being in town so you could travel to your other thing I mean that is definitely serendipitous I love it. so because the tour spans from I think March to like September right yeah or something like it's so the fact that it's yeah. this one weekend like I just like, and it's not like, yeah, it's just absolutely, it's just wild. It's, it's mm-hmm. wild, but you have another serendipitous story about Taylor Swift, Mindy. Yes. This one's shorter. Um, it was Halloween this year and I was trying to decide like, okay, what do I want to dress as? Cause lost my law school does like a Halloween party every year. Yeah. And Which way like, you should say that you won for the first year. I did my first year of law school I won the Halloween the like school-wide Halloween cost contest I um dressed up as Elle Woods from Legally Blonde uh, and with I the chihuahua. Yeah, yeah with your hair being blonde yes and I brought my mom has a like small chihuahua like bruiser <gasps> in um Legally Blonde and so I brought him to class with me in a pink purse and like walked around with him all day. <laughs> um so uh last year we had like Hurricane Ida and stuff so they didn't really do anything and so this year I was like I gotta like go all out again like I gotta <laughs> keep up my reputation here um and so Which this is a was- Taylor Swift reference <laughs> reputation. Yes. Oh, sure. <laughs> so this was soon after like the week after she released Midnight's that the party was and so the um for one of the award shows that she went to, which was like her debut of the Midnight's era, she wore this pretty like navy blue dress that was satin and it had these silver stars going across it. And so I was like, okay, like, I think I, this seems like something doable. And so I sent a picture just of that Taylor Swift outfit to my friend, Emily, who works at a consignment shop. So I text, texted her that and I was like, hey, does Swap have anything that looks like this? And she responded almost immediately, which that in itself is unusual for Emily. She's not the best texter and she knows that. (laughs) So she responds immediately and she was like, no, but I'm actually driving on Magazine Street and I just saw a dress that looks like that in the window of a boutique. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking like, okay, like I'll have to go and check and see like if they still have it. 
but she immediately was like, I can turn around and go see. So she like turned around, went into the store, sent me a picture of it, ended up buying it. It was like completely on point. It was just a long dress, but she's also a seamstress. So she was able to cut it. And she also had part of the costume was a like white fur coat Mm -hmm. that Emily's mom actually had one of. So it was like in the five minutes that it took of me coming up with the idea and texting her, (laughs) my whole costume was completely put together. And it really did look like it. Oh yeah. It was like pretty much spot on. And then the only thing I needed was these silver glittery heels. Uh I had like looked online for them. I was trying to find a store that had them and we have a shoe carnival here that I'm just like, I don't really feel like they're going to have it. But I looked at their website and they didn't have any. And I was like, okay. But as I'm driving home, I was like, you know what? I just really feel like they're going to have them. Like, I just need to go in. And so I walked into the store and they were playing Taylor Swift. And I walked in, I was like, oh, they're going to have them. Like, this is a sign. Taylor Swift is playing. And they had the perfect exact heels that weren't available on the website, but they were in the store. And I was just like, I literally voice memo Charlie, like just the song playing. I was like, I just need you to hear this because this is going to be part of a story later. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So good. It's just so many things. mm -hmm. And they all involve Taylor Swift, which yes love she's her and her herself she's just her as a person she is. yes yeah. I she I is. love Taylor Swift she got me through some dark times when I was coming out of the cult and uh it's the first real secular music that I ever listened to and so I always have a soft place in my heart for Taylor <laughs> she's the best I love her oh I love those stories and I love that it all involves two like your school too like the mm-hmm. trip is about you graduating and yeah you know, the Halloween was a thing for school. So yeah, it was so perfect. Good. So good. Thank you for sharing that. That was, oh, those are really fun stories. I love hearing things like this. And um, for everybody listening, if you've got a serendipitous story, please send it to us. We love these things. Um, you can write it to us or you can send us a voice memo on uh, Instagram. Uh, so if you're doing Instagram, it is serendipity.pod and if you want to send it to us as an email it's pod.serendipity at gmail.com and uh yeah we we'd love to have you send in a serendipitous story that we might be able to share on the show um and then what else we got charlie uh reviews reviews yeah if you enjoy the podcast and haven't left us a review yet, you can go to Apple Podcasts and um, leave us a review. And if you screenshot before you, sorry, my Frankie's very passionate about this. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's like, <laughs> he leave him. a review. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh yeah, if you take a screenshot before you submit it and, and send it to us, we have a gift for you, a free gift, um, just to show our gratitude. Um, it's custom serendipity artwork for your um desktop wallpaper your phone wallpaper or you can print it and you can also if you don't do apple music um i think spotify now allows you to review you can't like actually write something but you can go and like give something like five stars um so so yeah we would we would love a review and yeah thanks for listening and mindy thanks for being on and we will see y'all next time bye